Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today I want to talk about something that um, I, I think as a reviewer I sometimes overlook and even as knife buyers we, we sometimes overlook as well. And it's something that I've been paying way more attention to the last few years. Uh, every once in a while I forget, but it's to look for in the knives that we own and use and buy, it's to look for something special and unique and interesting and compelling to us. All right, uh, this particular knife is special and compelling to me because it came from a viewer who I who has been around for a long time, who I respect quite a bit, and uh, he felt like I should have a Victorinox to compare in videos, and that I should put some some use into this. The other thing that um, has kind of endeared this knife to me is that this knife flies under the radar. So it's definitely a full size knife. Okay, uh, lots of blade, very, very capable. But because it's a Swiss Army knife, uh, people who see it just kind of go, oh, no big deal, it's just a Swiss Army knife. Kind of everyone carries one, everyone has one, not a, not a huge thing. And uh, because of that, I can carry this a lot of places where, you know, you might have a hard time carrying a different folding knife. And so that's the, the uh, that's the other sort of unexpected side of this knife. It's it's extremely useful in that I can carry a large capable knife um, in places where other knives would not get past security. So uh, I, I like this for a number of reasons, uh, both sentimental that it came from a viewer and uh, practical because I can carry it in so many places and it doesn't seem to bother the sheeple. Uh, which is nice. But the principle that I want to kind of drive at today is uh, that I appreciate knives more that have something special about them, something unique, something interesting, something that, that draws me to them beyond just, hey, this is a good functional cutting tool. And that's going to be more important, I think, moving forward. Every day, there seems to be, you know, another overseas knife maker who, you know, are able to produce a liner lock flipper on bearings in D2 steel for, you know, around $40 and then bring it to, you know, the U.S. market. And honestly, it's reached a point now where, like, you can't even keep track of them. I'm sure, you know, just while I've been saying this, you know, there's three new company names on Blade HQ and, and on whatever other retailer you frequent uh, making, <laughs> you know, making their they're uh you know decently built and by the way a lot of these are, are really well built knives and they are highly functional cutting tools and that's about where the story ends and the other the other challenge i would say is some of them uh, in addition to there just being so many of these companies many of those companies also have so many models like they come to market with 55 different models right away Okay, now there are some standouts, guys. Civivi, I think, does some, some interesting special stuff. Uh, CJRB had the Field Spar a while back, which really stood out, and I think it's a great budget option. Um, but y there's just a sea of good knives, all right? And that's great. As a consumer, that increases competition. It gives me more options to find exactly what I want. I have no problem with it. As a reviewer, though, it's hard to find something to say, hey, this is special, this is interesting, this is something that you really might be interested, one, in watching a video about, and two, maybe even owning for yourself. But then there are these knives that have something extra, something unique, something cool, some, you know, bit of ingenuity, something that makes them stand out from the crowd. And I've got what I think may be one of my best examples of this in the Cold Steel 8015. So is the 8015 a functional heavy duty cutting tool? Absolutely, right? I've carried this, I've used it quite a lot. It's a great functional knife, all right? However, it also takes the cool points and just like knocks them right off the chart. This Scorpion lock is amazing. I think, number one, I think the design is extremely attractive. I really love the way you can kind of see through here and the way the, the lock actuates. I, I just find so much satisfaction from this knife. And that's the point I'm trying to make is that if you focus on knives that do something interesting and special and deliver something that maybe no one else is delivering, then your satisfaction with the knife hobby, I think, will be that much better. All right. Now, I'm not at all, you know, negating the place for very plain Jane knives. You know, a Rat Model 1 is still going to be a classic, and it should be. Uh, but a knife like this just is is 
doing something unique and special. And it's these kind of knives that I really appreciate. And I'd like to go through some of the knives that to me really stand out from the crowd and do something interesting and provide some extra bit of ingenuity or interest or really pull something off in a special way. And so let's go through a list. Some of these knives I own, others I don't own, but I'll share with you anyway. Uh, the next knife that I want to share with you, so certainly the 8010 is high on that list. The Wii Knives 037 is high on this list. Uh, by the way, this is, I'm not going to bring one in or share a picture or anything, but the, the way that Wii Knives have done their integral pivots is another example of this. Uh, the Riot um, Jack 2 that I recently had on the channel, uh, that's another example of really doing something interesting and different. Uh, this, though, I think is something exceptional because the, the minor differences and the nuances about this knife are extremely well thought out and deliver what is a, a more functional folding knife because of the innovation. So it's not just, so for example, if we go back to the 8010 for a second, I love the Scorpion lock and it's so cool. But if this knife were just, didn't have the Scorpion lock, just had a traditional triad lock, it would still be a good functional knife. Um, the Scorpion lock just adds a bit of cool factor. All right, this knife, the ingenuity that it offers really makes it more functional, more interesting, more compelling. So let's look at a couple of little details. First off, the internal milling on this is extreme. And so it's a real honeycomb pattern in here that makes this knife incredibly light. So for a nine ounce knife, I mean a nine inch knife, this thing weighs in at like four ounces, which is ridiculous. Uh, the milling is fantastic, so it feels basically perfect in hand. The blade steel is fantastic. The ergonomics, like everything about this knife is right. So those, by the way, all those things would be right, even if it weren't for the little details that they, they kind of nail here. But let's look at the next one. So the clip on this knife, the way it's recessed here is genius and really, really well thought out and well executed so that when I first saw this, I had real concern that recessing this clip would make it really, really difficult to get in and out of pocket, but it doesn't. It doesn't at all. So they've done this and makes the, it makes the clip virtually impossible to, like in hand, it just vanishes. It disappears completely. And yet it's there and it's very nice and you've got lots of room in there. So even in my 511s or a heavy pair of jeans, this fits perfectly. And so they've done a great job. Finally, the way that they attach these handles is really, really cool. So rather than, you know, putting a screw through here and a screw through here and having some standoffs, they have milled in these portions of the back, of, uh, more portions of the scales that actually fit together. So they kind of do this kind of thing. And then the screw goes down through all of it, holding the knife together, which makes a super clean aesthetic knife that is, Again, it's it's a little difference that really adds a lot. And and it, I think, you know, it would be cool to see we do a lot more of this because it's really, really impressive stuff. All right, finally, this little bit of milling here. All right, when this knife is in pocket, this milling is right where you need it for your thumb to come out. So uh, what's it doing there? It's allowing you to extract the knife easier. And so this is a knife where all of the ingenuity and all of the tweaks of design are put directly into utility and it makes it so cool and it's just so well thought out and it's so interesting. And, and I get a lot of enjoyment from the way, the little things that have been done different on this knife that make it that much better. Um, next knife on the list. Oh yeah, actually let's, let's bring in a couple things here. Let's bring back the stuff we've covered already just so you have something to look at. I'll roll in some pictures here, but I want to mention SK Blades has a couple of knives like this. So the SK Blades Buck 110 Silver Fox is amazing. Uh, it's, it's a buck 110, but it's in 20 CV steel. It's silver bolsters. It's classy. It looks absolutely beautiful. And it really is something special and different that, again, just takes it from a regular old buck 110 and just puts it, you know, knocks it up like by a thousand percent and makes it a truly special, interesting knife that can, that can really provide a lot of satisfaction. Uh, they have a, the Buck 830 Marksman. Uh, they've got the Smoke, and then there's another one that's orange. Uh, but these are all from SK Blades, and they take a knife that's already good. By the way, the 830 Marksman is the, the strap lock, is a great lock, really, really ingenious design from the Hawk Brothers. 
and uh, the marksman executes it extremely well. All right. So, and then you add the fact that you're getting a special version in G10 and S35VN, uh, and yeah. So, uh, SK Blades, go and check out the bucks that they have there. I've talked to uh, I've talked to them a couple of times and really strongly recommended, maybe requested that they do one of the new Buck 110 Slim, the Pro. So, you know, the Pro Micarta and S30V, I think it'd be great if they offered maybe Black Micarta with 20 CV or some other variation. Because I really do think that that Buck Slim is a great knife. It really is cool. Uh, and to see that offered in some variants would be pretty neat as well. So I'll, I'll picture those uh, that you can, I hope you've enjoyed that as we kind of worked our way through. Next knife on the list is a fixed blade. And it's not, you know, anything really, really crazy. But again, it stands out as special because of its balance, because of how nicely it's done. So there's the sheath there. Um, so this is the Chris Reeve Knives Neala. And what we've got here is a hollow grind with a nice edge, very thick blade stock. But I used this a bunch, actually, when I was preparing turkey dinner uh, over, you know, for the Easter weekend. And this cut so well. I use it for a bunch of food prep stuff. And to get a knife that's this thick and this heavy duty while also being as beautiful as this is, and then to add great performance, to me that really makes it stand out as unique. And so many of the heavy duty sort of outdoor survival type knives that I have, I would never think of using them in the kitchen, but this has struck such a great balance that it works really, really well. Now it's not the only knife, by the way, that I would use in the kitchen, but I love the balance it strikes and it really makes it special. And of course that in single blade shape also makes it unique and different and interesting, uh, which uh, you know, once again, really elevates it as something special to have in your collection. The next knife I've got is a Kaiser. And this one uh, I like for different reasons. Again, this one strikes an interesting balance. It's a fantastic EDC knife because of the fact that it's fairly, you know, it's fairly small. It's still got lots of blade. Um, the sheath is not ideal. Mostly the sheath isn't terrible. It doesn't have as good a retention as I wish it did, but I can easily fix that with just a heat gun and tighten this down a little bit. And I will do that. I just haven't gotten around to it. Where it kind of falls down is the, uh, the clip here. This <laughs> bent over clip is just not quite strong enough. So whenever I'm carrying this knife, I'm always a little bit nervous that I'm going to lose it. And so that's that's the weak point of it. The the uniqueness though of it is just the beautiful Yuli Henneke design, so nicely implemented and and it you know very similar of course to the T1 and the T1 could probably go on this list uh, as well, but uh, there's just something that I connect with about this fixed blade. Okay, next knife. This is one that I think most people could anticipate being on this list. Uh, this is the quintessential hard use, heavy duty, overbuilt knife. This, this takes the hard use, overbuilt trend and maxes it out, right? Um, it, it's huge and indestructible. And, you know, anyone who's watched those cold steel, you know, destruction tests has seen how this thing stood up uh, to, you know, over 800 pounds, like just ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> and to me, although this is not totally practical, right, this is not a knife I'm going to carry around every day. To me, the, the cool factor of having what I would, I, I think I would say with confidence that of all the folding knives out there, this is the toughest, hardest use, most heavily built folder in existence right now. Okay. And that I, is something special. It really stands out from the crowd and that's very, very satisfying to me. Now, no, I'm not going to carry this every day. And I know some of you do, and I'll probably get comments. Come on, Kevin, man up. You can carry a Formax every day. I know you can, but it's a little uncomfortable. And so I don't normally do it. But again, uh, having this is so satisfying. And this is one of those knives I kind of pick up and fondle a bit every day. I carry it probably one day out of the week. It's just an, a, a huge joy to have have a Formax in the collection because of the, the uniqueness that it holds. Next knife on the list I want to bring in, let's, let's use the, the Neala that we already had here, but the, the Chris Reeve knives, 
sorry, a little bit of leather there out of the sheath. But uh, I'm a big fan of Chris Reeve knives in general. The 21 is great, but it's sort of a classic. It's a classic look. But where I think the Chris Reeve knife, Tim, wow. The Chris Reeve knife that stands out to me the most is the Inkosi. I find with the Inkosi, Chris Reeve has done something really, really unique. They have built what may be the, the single best hard used, long term use type of knife out there. And yet they've defied a lot of the, the hard use sort of stereotypes, right? Like they don't have this massive thick blade stock. It's not a flipper, which is nice. It's it's still got that very standard knife feel from the 21, but they've just ramped things up so that everything is just meant to last forever. And, and that really appeals to me, right? They've struck this, I would say, probably the most perfect balance of all. Right, it's it's not too big, it's not too small, it's not too overbuilt, it's thin enough that it cuts well, it's light enough that it carries well, and yet all the components are designed in such a way that they're just incredibly tough and are gonna last forever and a day. And and to me that is spectacular. So I will obviously be rolling in pictures of the Inkosi, and I have a whole video where I go over all of those details so you know exactly what I mean by all of that, but the Inkosi is one of those knives that really stands out and does something special. Next on the list is maybe something not so special, but to me, pretty awesome. So this is the Spyderco Manix 2 Lockback. And not everyone is going to love this knife, mostly because it's not a fidgety knife. All right, you just have to open it and cut stuff. Um, you can't play with it. You know, it's not going to drop shut for you. Uh, well, it kind of will. But this, to me, is one of the best EDC Spydercos available. And the, the lockback is so satisfying and fun. And the big difference here is, and I've, uh, you know, I, I said this in a video recently, when you have to cut something that's a little tougher, that's a little harder, this handle and the extra width that it has it is amazing. It feels so good in hand. And this knife does almost, okay, is almost to me as special as the Inkosi because it, it strikes this fantastic balance. Like this is a very heavy duty, very confidence inspiring, very well built knife that, you know, it kind of, you know, doesn't, it doesn't have to be nine inches and 15 ounces to be hard use, right? This is an extremely capable knife. Look at the thickness on that blade stock. Look at the, the size of the lock big it's just it's a really really great knife for people who have got to do some extra stuff with their knives and yet it's not huge and heavy and, and, and encumbering all right it's just nice and slim and classy and again it does something a little different that you don't see a lot of knives pull off all right uh next knife on the list this one again is something that is just a little different a little out there so fairly traditional knife design in uh, what's essentially a modern tactical folder all right and this is again a great combination so we're very used to seeing a clip point with bolsters in in sort of all the outdoor knives going all the way back to uh, the buck 110 and even other you know the bowie knife and, and lots of old style knives and this takes that old style and implements it in a design that's a very modern design with modern materials and i've of course changed mine to have the uh, have the marbled carbon fiber from Rogue Blade Works, which I think is fantastic. Um, and, and to me, that makes this even that much more special. But again, this is a knife that's not just your plain Jane, you know, yeah, you could get a Griptilian and it would be a great knife, no question. But uh, if you wanted something special, something interesting, something different that not that you don't see all the time, this is the knife. This will perform everything the Griptilian will perform and more, but it'll do so with a look and a feel that just makes it kind of stand out and be really, really interesting. Um, let's see, I've got a couple of more to go over here. The next one is one that's, that's again, very, very special, very, very popular. So this is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. By the way, um, uh, 
go over to Southern Edge Knife Works and check them out. Uh, a number of the knives I've shared with you have come from Southern Edge Knife Works, including this one. Uh, huge help to the channel. Chad's a great guy. Uh, you'll get 15% off if you use my discount code. And uh, yeah, just, uh, just great guys, and so definitely go check it out. And actually, if you comment on this video uh, telling me what knife stands out, what knife meets that special criteria for you that does something a little different, a little interesting, that makes the knife just that much more satisfying, let me know down in the comments below and I will enter you in a, in a giveaway. I've got some, uh, some Southern Edge Knife Works swag to send out. So go ahead and do that and then I'll drop that stuff in a box and you know I'll just get my kids to help me randomly pick a name and I'll, I'll get in touch with you and uh, send that out. So uh, thank you in advance for doing that. Of course, thanks to Southern Edge Knifeworks for providing that swag. Definitely go check those guys out. But now let's get back to the knife in question. So this is the Spyderco Spidey Chef, a sleesh design. Very nice, very slim, very carryable. Uh, it doesn't, now, now look, it doesn't do anything super duper special in terms of just a titanium frame lock. There are tons of titanium frame locks. In fact, there are tons of titanium frame locks that I like better than this, okay, but, what this knife does that makes it truly unique is the LC200N steel and just the overall design choices that make it practically rust proof. That is so cool. All right. That is such an interesting and compelling thing that, you know, again, when, when you share this with your friends, one, it's an interesting design and it's definitely different in that regard. Uh, but then when you tell someone like this knife cannot rust, it just can't. I don't know how that doesn't make everyone kind of geek out a little bit. It truly does to me. And, and so this knife has that extra special factor. All right, now I don't carry it a lot because it's just, you know, it, it doesn't do it for me totally, but it, it definitely does at the same time. I can really geek out over this knife because it's just so interesting that you've got a knife that I could just, I don't know, dunk this in a bottle, bucket of water, come back a week later and take it out and have no concerns. All right, that's really, really interesting to me. Um, so, and I'm exaggerating a little. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't recommend you do that with yours, but it's just crazy that that's a thing. Uh, next knife that I want to talk about. So let's get the Spider Chef out of the way. Uh, next knife that I want to talk about is one, again, that I don't have here, but I'll roll in a picture. Let's throw a couple things in here. Uh, roll in a picture. The Reich P848. That's such an amazing knife. The design is different. And, you know, so many people, when I reviewed that knife, said, this should have a flipper. This should have something. This should have. Um, and I will say, that knife with a front flipper would be a dream come true. But even in the, the, the current iteration, it's an amazing knife. It's different and cool and satisfying. And I just, every time I pick it up, every time I look at it, I think what a great design, what a cool idea. So, and yeah, and if you don't have one of those, go over to Reich Knives Canada, pick one up. Uh, they're very competitive. Matt over there is an awesome guy. He's helped the channel a ton. So please, please support them. And that is such a cool knife. It's just different and unique and so interesting to me. Uh, and of course, very, very capable as a cutting tool. So the one last knife I've got here. Now, this is a knife that's interesting, um, not so much from a collection standpoint. This is a knife that I think you want to use and carry. And uh, you know, I, I'm not done with my review yet, but I will, you know, one, I want a nicer day. It's we, <laughs> all of a sudden winter came back in the middle of April, but this knife can do exactly what I suspected it could do. So when you, I would clip this to my tool belt and just leave it there. Everyone who works in construction, uh, or even if you're just a around the house type of handyman, this knife is like 15 bucks, clip it to your tool belt and it will do great things for you. So what I love about this, and I've already used it this way, all of us have had that situation where you cut something with a skill saw, and you know, because the roundness of the blade, it doesn't clean everything out. So this is fantastic for getting in those square slots and cleaning out the, the leavings that a saw often leaves behind. It can also, if you flip it around this way, very gently, you can scrape stuff, you can work. So if you need to get dig in a little more, you can flip it the other way. So really, really handy tool, especially if you're the kind of person that does that kind of work either around your house or if you work in construction. I, I have had this, I had to take it off my tool belt for this, but I've had this clip to my tool belt and it is so, so enjoyable to have. It's just really, really slick. Now, the only drawback I would say is, and I always feel like this when I have a fixed blade in my tool belt, I still do it, 
Carry an Ulfa knife as well, because there's some cutting tasks you do on a construction site that are going to destroy your blade, and you want that blade that you can, hey, I can make these five cuts, and then I can break this off and throw it away. You still want that, uh, but then something like this that's just a little more substantial that can do most of the work of a chisel. The only thing it can't do is you can't, you know, pound on the back here, or at least I wouldn't. You probably could get away with it, but... Uh, and maybe you will for 15 bucks. It's not if you break it. It's not like the end of the world. But uh, really unique, really interesting. Not what we're used to seeing. And so for that, I take. I found a lot of joy having this. And you should see the looks when, that I get when other people see me pull it out. They're like, "What is that?" You know, I need one of those too. Uh, so really, really cool. All right, guys, so there you go. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for commenting down below. I will pick somebody out and I'll send out a t-shirt and a hat from Southern Edge Knife Works. I'll probably, just for the sake of simplicity and shipping cost, uh, put those in one package and send them to one person. But if I, you know, if the mood strikes me, I might send it to two. So go ahead and comment down below. Again, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.